webinar on higher education opportunity with the University of Law, United Kingdom. The university is one of the UK's longest established specialist providers of legal education with a rich heritage and a reputation for innovation and contemporary teaching practices. To know more about EU law, we have with us our esteemed panelists joining us from UK, Ms. Joanna Bellard, Pro Vice Chancellor, Academic Development, U Law, Ms. Tatiana, Director of International Partnerships at U Law, Dr. Andries, Director of Business School, U Law. While our panelists don't require any introductions as such, we introduce them to you uh, so that uh, you are aware as to whom you are speaking to. Uh, Joanna Bellard, Pro, Pro Vice Chancellor, Academic Development, started her career as a solicitor working in government and private practice. Joanna specializes in uh, civil litigation, employment, and public laws since 1989 when she joined College of Law in York as a tutor. She entered the academic administration in 2002, and since then, she has been instrumental in the innovative design and delivery of different law programs, both in online and face-to-face -face mode. Joanna was appointed by Pro Vice Chancellor at U Law in November 2018, and she takes care of the overall development of undergraduate. and postgraduate programs. Welcome, Joanna, to the webinar. Thank you very much, Shadeen. Yeah. Next, you. Dr. Andres uh, Perez, and uh, he has been working in business schools since 2000 with a mixed background that comprises elements of executive and academic activity. He started his career as a lawyer, uh, but soon moved to management at C-Suit in his uh, areas like tourism, real estate, and internet industries. Dr. Andres, before joining the University of Law Business School in May 2019, has served as director at many prestigious business schools like Malanga Campus of Santa Melo Business School in Spain, Dubai MBA director as, uh, at CAS Business School. Dr. Perez is a senior fellow of the Higher Education Academy in UK. He holds a LLB, BSc in Economics, Business and MBA, PhD in Business with his uh, thesis on the topic strategy in business schools and I believe today is going to address us on this particular issue. So welcome, Dr. Perez, uh, to the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. The third panelist we have, Ms. Tatiana, and she's Director of International Partnerships, and she is responsible for developing new strategic partnerships, managing extra existing partnerships, coordinating marketing activities, and leading international course development teams at the University of Law. She has over 22 years of international education and transformation project management experience with a track record of 40 end-to-end -end execution of large and complex education projects. Prior to her appointment at University of Law, she has worked with many prestigious institutions as in strategic positions like IBM, ING, European Union, and many more. Uh, she's a mathematician, to my surprise, and uh, holds a MSc in analysis, design, and management from London School of Economics. So welcome, Tatiana, to the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. So friends, uh, we have a small presentation which uh, provides an overview of U-Law and its offerings. I would request Tatiana to please begin with the presentation. Thank you. Tatiana, you can proceed. Thank you, Vijay. Um, good morning, everybody from London. Uh, it is a great joy and pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we hope that today, uh, within the next hour, we will give you an overview of uh, the University of Law and our works in that. That we would very much welcome any of your questions in the case. And uh, we can start by presenting you uh, our um, works and the heritage of the University of Law in the UK. So we can trace our origins back to late 1800s uh, with the formation of uh, the Law Society and the establishment of the Law Society as a school of law. So we are a university of standing more than 200 100 years and we have trained more lawyers in English common law than any other law school. Today the university approximately um, 
has in our 15 campuses 12,000 students all in the UK, but we have a number of international students as well in our international campuses and we will soon present you those as well. As we are very much a business oriented university, we work with 90 of the top 100 UK law firms and we have a partner arrangements where they send the trainees exclusively to us so therefore we have close links with a wide range of barristers chambers in the UK but also internationally. This is a very quick snapshot of our uh, UK campuses and our international campuses. We operate in the UK in 13 different locations. Two of those are in London but then again we have campuses in all of the major cities in the UK and we have very recently established our two international campuses. One is in Germany, is in Hong Kong. In the next slide, I believe there is a number of photos that demonstrate a feeling of uh, how would a student, uh, what would the student see in case you have decided to join one of our campuses in the UK. But as I mentioned, also we operate from our locations in Berlin and Hong Kong as well. In the middle, you can see our oldest campus. This is in Guildford, UK. And this is where all the journey of the University of Law started from. That's a beautiful campus indeed. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, Vijay. <laughs> so the University of Law has uh, a different approach in a number of things and we believe that this over the 200 years of our story has worked well to the benefit of our students and our alumni as we have mentioned this is, we are one of the longest established specialist providers in uk education and legal education in europe but we have also a very large alumni database that would count more than 65,000 65, members, uh, not only in the UK, but also internationally. Having said that, uh, means that our graduates have excellent networking opportunities in terms of their employability. And this is very much uh, a function that we support with our alumni worldwide. As we have mentioned, we have very strong links with the industry. Uh, we work with 90 of the top 100 law firms, but we are slowly establishing our links with uh, international businesses in the UK and also abroad. And we have an award-winning pro bono team that would support the legal skills of our graduates. Uh, we offer them over than 3,000 opportunities to work on real cases while they're studying that's a, that's that's indeed a great uh, initiative because uh, i had a privilege you know i am moderating the session today but i had a privilege of visiting process and looking at these particular processes very closely and i find that this pro bono uh, initiative of employability which actually puts the students into yeah. the shoes of the lawyers uh, from the beginning and give them the practical exposure is quite a unique thing uh, would you like to elaborate something more on this particular aspect? I think we do cover that in the next slide of the presentation and I would like to invite uh, uh, Mrs. Joanna Ballard, the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of Law in Academic Development that she can expand more on the quality and employability mm -hmm. of the University of Law who does cover our pro bono opportunities as well to our oh, students. Great. So, uh, I find and I was doing some uh, research uh, before this particular webinar and I found and it is quite uh, interesting to note that UK is one of the best destinations for students to seek, who are seeking studying abroad for several reasons, including the highest student satisfaction rates among English speaking countries with over 90% of the, uh, you know, about 2.32 million students who are in UK are happy with their experience. And EULA is known for its quality and employability standards. And Joanna, who you would use also to share about 
about uh, this happiness in uh, which I must say of yours. Thank too. you. Please go ahead. No, thank you that for the and thank you for the introduction, VJ. I'm delighted to be with you all today. Thank us. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity um, to talk about our programmes and the university. Um, I think the point is Tatiana was actually making that the programmes, both from a, a law or under business perspective, our vision as a university is to maximise student opportunity. And that's not only at the university itself, but also employability prospects when they actually leave us and move on, whether it's in the business environment generally or to qualify as lawyers. And how we actually do that is to make sure that the quality of our programmes, we always put the students at the front. They always are our, our primary aim when we develop our programmes. And that is actually recognised through various, uh, if you like, um, regulatory perspectives, which we've summarised for you there on that slide. Our employability outcomes are very, very good, both in the undergraduate and also the postgraduate market. So we've given you a couple of statistics there. Students who study on our undergraduate programme, BLLB, 92% of those students seek or obtain rather employment or move on to further study within six months of actually leaving us. And equally in relation to our vocational programmes where students want to go on and actually qualify as either solicitors or barristers, 97% of our LPC team uh, seek or obtain training contracts or move on to further study within nine months of completing their programme of study with us. So that's fantastic success rates. And, and to um, link back to the pro bono point um, that Vijay was raising before, each of our campuses that uh, Tatiana has, has explained or shown you on as she's gone through um, her part of the presentation, they do have a pro bono, what we call a pro bono unit within each campus. And that gives students the opportunity to actually, within the sort of geographical area that that campus is based, to actually go out and get work experience, whether that's with the voluntary sector. So it might be what we call a citizen's advice bureau, where people walk in off the street seeking advice on very practical problems or alternatively they may get work placements within a solicitor's uh, practice or alternatively um, in a barrister's what we call chambers which is where barristers actually work together so we're very keen to promote that and uh, we, we refer to our program as applied programs we're teaching the legal principles not only for the sake of it but also ensuring students understand how they work in practice and how you apply them to a particular situation to evidence how students are at the centre of what we're doing, um, our NSS results, that is um, a survey of students nationally studying yeah. on undergraduate law programmes. We have got a student satisfaction rate on there of 88%. Well, we've just got breaking news for you. We've just got our scores for 2019. And that student satisfaction score has gone up to 91%. So we're incredibly proud of that and it has put us as a first in the rankings in England so all those other satisfaction scores you see referred to there as teaching quality academic support for our students but also the student voice listening to what our students want all, all those scores have increased so that's very exciting and we're absolutely delighted but it's testimony to the hard work of the team uh, at ULaw across all those campuses Indeed. Equally, congratulations for this thank you thank you thank you very much for that um, in addition, the QAA, again, is the regulatory body for all universities uh, in the UK. And again, we've got a commendation, which is unusual from the QAA a couple of years ago now. But again, it was because we have students at the centre of what we're doing and we're keen always to enhance the student learning experience. <laughs> and finally, just to um, reassure anybody who's thinking of coming across to the UK to study, again, updated numbers on that, we have got increased 
CAS numbers, confirmation of acceptance for study for students that actually want to study with us in the UK, those numbers have imp uh, increased again for 2019. So yeah. moving on more particularly um, to actually look at, just give you some headlines really on um, our programmes. I've already mentioned the point, students study, that is the focus of what we do and they're learning it so you know and we're very very practically focused what we call vocationally focused so our students learn by doing uh, practicing the application of principles to you know to really um, any practical problem that the client walking in the door may actually have and obviously giving students opportunity to actually reflect on their learning and develop and move forward again our staff base our academic staff base is perhaps slightly different some uh, universities you may research the way we um, approach learning is that and the employer and to achieve the employability statistics you've just seen is we do use qualified lawyers barristers or judges you've already heard andres the introduction to andres you know he qualified as a as um, a lawyer and then moved into the business world i'm getting qualified as a lawyer myself so we take staff that all have all got extensive practical experience which gives us opportunity to actually feed that into the students learning tatiana's um, outlined we work extensively with firms um, and we listen again to what they want because that can only support our students employability uh, prospects at the end of the day and finally which I'll come on to do with the programs um, we've deliberately developed our programs both um, as attendance mode face-to-face -face courses for those students who prefer that mode of tuition and if you're of course if you're interested in coming across to England to study then you have a range of campuses that Tatiana's already outlined. But in addition, students may prefer to study online. So as you can see from the undergraduate slide there, our LLB undergraduate programme is delivered but in both ways, face-to-face -face and online. And we've developed a suite of programmes that enable you to study law, but all also law with a range of subjects, and this is where Andres and I link up, for example, LLB Law with International Business, whereby students can study or, or choose to study um, different optional subjects in years two and three, whether they're business or criminology, et cetera, from that lengthy list there. And then moving on to our postgraduates, these are the programmes. These programmes divide themselves into two parts. The first are the programmes that enable students to actually go on and qualify as a solicitor or barrister. So that's the ones listed on the left there, basically down to, well, the first three down to um, the bar professional training course. And then the balance of the programmes there are our academic masters. And we have developed a suite of academic masters that again, very much link across, have a relationship with either law or business, which students often at undergraduate level, if they don't wish to go on, qualify as a barrister or solicitor, they may choose to go on and study those academic masters programmes. Finally, this diagram shows you, a little bit different probably from what you're used to um, in India, shows you the route to qualification in the UK. And the main point of difference is we have both, well, we have separated barristers who primarily represent clients in the higher courts. So they are very much the advocates in the higher courts in the UK, in England and Wales, uh, as opposed to solicitors who deal with a client who perhaps has a, a something, a, a problem, or perhaps wants to achieve, for example, a property purchase, something of that nature, which doesn't need to go near a court. The solicitors will deal with the day-to-day -day, uh, arrangements with clients. So slightly different routes, slightly different programmes, which link to the postgraduate programs that were on the previous slide 
And finally, also note right at the bottom there, um, it is possible now we have introduced in uh, England and Wales again, an apprenticeship route to qualification. And this is for people, for people who are working in a solicitor's office in that environment and essentially one day of their week is devoted to study so a long period of time to qualify in in that way it's five and a half years or six years to actually qualify as a solicitor but it's proving increasingly popular route to qualification so it's another route to actually look at so that's in essence is, is what we do from a law point of view. Um, going back to you, VJ, I think we were going to pick up um, in yeah. relation to the business yes, programme. I think the only thing I was going to say, VJ, sorry, the only thing I should have added there, of course, is those routes to qualification are recognised by the Bar Council now in India. Yes, so and that is, uh, that. that is an added advantage. And uh, Absolutely. I must say, you know, uh, that, is, that is quite a bouquet of programmes. And uh, I can see <laughs> it was... <laughs> I was looking at, uh, you know, the Chambers book and probably I got that when I was attending one of yes. them. And I was uh, finding that uh, it is one of the universities which offers all these three, GDL, BPTC and LPC, everything is available. And one of the sought after uh, courses uh, from people and that is what uh, gives you so much of a high ranking. So congratulations yeah. to you all for uh, putting up this excellent uh, programs for people to do. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Andres, uh, I'm quite impressed with you because uh, you have done a lot of research and, uh, uh, you know, work in the area of strategic partnership in business schools. And who could be the better person to speak on this uh, aspect? I uh, would like to throw, uh, if you could throw some light on value of business education at the University of Law Business School, uh, would be great. So over to you, uh, Professor. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, it is a pleasure for me to be here today. Thank you for inviting me. And definitely it's a privilege to be talking to, to students potentially interested in our um, partnership. So um, to that question, I, I think it's, it's, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, probably um, there are many reasons why organizations partner, but uh, for business schools and universities, probably the main driver is providing value to the students so that they can have uh, opportunities that they wouldn't have uh, if the universities were working alone in isolation by themselves. So I wonder, uh, what would it be a slide that may appeal to these students that will understand uh, to what extent they can get uh, some value from that potential partnership, for that partnership that we have, and uh, so that they can come to, to, to London to our programs and uh, get those benefits. So uh, essentially, these are the five points I thought I would like to present to them. Uh, first of all, I would I need to start by something that is why to pursue a postgrad in particular uh, in business uh, after they have undertaken a, 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 an undergrad program that may not be in business, maybe normally in a, a, another area, maybe law, maybe engineering, anyone. So uh, that has a very easy answer for me. Um, you know, normally uh, people, uh, students start when they finish their, their degree, they start a professional uh, career uh, by um, uh, working uh, from a technical perspective. Uh, they are experts in, in law, in engineering, in medicine, whatever. But uh, normally uh, ascending the pyramid of the organizations they require different skills. So uh, at the moment that you uh, change from knowing how to do something to uh, being able to assess when to do something, uh, who needs to do something, at what time is uh, the right time to tackle something, that's a completely different scenario. So the kind of skills that are needed for strategy decision, for leading teams, for organizing things, they are essentially a, a different kind of uh, set. Uh, that's why uh, our strong recommendation is that if uh, students are interested in progressing in organizations, definitely a postgrad in business makes sense because it, it will complement uh, in a way the technical uh, education that they got in the undergrad with uh, the, the tools that they're going to need to uh, continue their career in their uh, organizations. There's also a second main uh, reason why students 
students may uh, want to take a part in, in business. Um, for those of uh, you who are interested in entrepreneurship, in launching your own company, uh, the, uh, there is a great opportunity for you to prepare your project uh, with us. And then uh, from a solid perspective that will include uh, not just uh, teaching in research methods, but also the supervision of uh, one of our experts, you can definitely start your own business uh, much more confidently than you may do uh, just by, by yourself alone. So to me, these are the two main reasons for uh, why, why to pursue a, a, a postgrad in, in business. Uh, why to do it in the UK and particularly with us? Well, first of all, uh, uh, to gain international recognition. That's an important bit. And you know that UK education is uh, particularly uh, well recognized uh, across the world for the, um, the quality standards. And that's something that stands out. Uh, and uh, just puts you in a different level from, from uh, other people. Uh, the fact that you may have proof that you got that, uh, that education at that level. And also it is taught in English, which is, as you know, for business is particularly relevant because the lingua franca. So you can go anywhere in the world uh, and it's not just the language itself it's the concepts the the way that the business is understood it's also a cultural aspect of business so all that makes a good bundle to make a decision to follow uh, with the postgrad in, in in the uk in particular um, uh, university of law business school you know the way I can find to describe our institution is a young and vibrant business school within uh, um, a well and solid reputed uh, university. So I would say that we have uh, the best of all both worlds. Sorry, I need to ignore this call. <laughs> I think that we can provide the best of world, both worlds for, for this and the students will get a profit from that, definitely. So uh, our methodology in particular is, is uh, something I need to talk about because it's, it's very special. So we don't, uh, we're not very fond of lectures. Uh, we try to keep them as a minimum. I mean, there's some part of knowledge that we need to transfer to the students in some way, but definitely uh, we rely on uh, that the aim of the programs is really more connected to uh, developing critical thinking regarding business situations that really uh, providing any kind of knowledge that at the moment, let's be frank, some of them, I mean, most of them is already on the internet and students can have access. But it's the critical, it's the discussion, it's the, the elaboration and just lead, lead to a final decision about in this particular uh, business situation, what would be your course of action? That is not taught if you are not in this, the center of this discussion. So that's why we keep the, the, the groups uh, small, uh, normally 20 students maximum, in some of our campuses maybe 30, but no more than that. Uh, and the methodology is based on exactly that, participants centered discussion. So we test from real business situation, we elaborate on that, we discuss them. So by the end of this process, when you have done this many, many, many times through the year that uh, the MSCs take, you are uh, trained in precisely that, making decisions in business situation, assessing, evaluating, and uh, analyzing this, this situation. Um, as a result and as a consequence, the majority of the modules are assessed by coursework instead of traditional exams, because we need to be consistent with what we say. I mean, and if we want to develop critical thinking through discussion, through elaboration of concepts and through elaboration of, uh, that, that, that we, we need to assess, uh, it would be just pointless if we are such just the knowledge, case discussion, uh, through presentations, through workshops, uh, through, uh, sorry, coursework, and uh, that, that's uh, how we make it um, um, definitely make, make sense. Um, finally, there are two things I need to also to, to, to mention. One of them has already been uh, raised in the, uh, in, in my, uh, by my previous uh, my pre colleagues in previous presentations. One of the things is the access to work. Uh, we are strongly uh, focused on employability. There's a strong career service, uh, but also some of the programs include an internship. Um, if you are interested in any of our programs, contact our uh, colleagues and they will let you know if the programs or what programs in internship and which ones don't. Uh, and also to be confirmed, you know that the, 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 now there's a graduate route uh, for post study uh, work visas 
that uh, may uh, facilitate that students, some of the uh, of them, the ones who want to stay in the UK for working uh, for, I think it's two years, I don't uh, remember, uh, but but this is to be confirmed. Uh, so the, we are expecting news uh, from the government. Uh, please uh, keep uh, in contact with the, the website, in particular the government, and more information will be released very soon. And we trust that we will facilitate the access to, to work for those who want to get that experience in the UK. And finally, why not get that experience of other countries, lifestyles, have the experience of London and Berlin, where we deliver most of our programs, but also in other places, in, the, in Birmingham, in other uh, places where we have uh, our programs. In the future, Hong Kong, we have a, a campus in Hong Kong. Uh, we are starting in September, so, uh, but uh, yes, in the future, there will be a possibility too, of course. And uh, all of them are business hubs uh, and definitely provide a unique experience, a unique possibility and the multiculturalism is there in all the uh, all the cities. So very briefly, uh, in particular the postgrad uh, portfolio of our uh, programs, uh, I, I just want to, to explain a little about that because if you've seen all of them listed, you may not grasp the difference between all of them. So uh, we have a generalist program, which is the MSc in Strategy Business Management, when students can get a flavor of all the subjects that are um, key to business uh, education, uh, so that's finance, uh, operations, uh, human resource uh, management, marketing strategy. And then uh, if you want to focus your career, uh, and uh, be, uh, t you can take one of the most specialized uh, MSCs. Uh, we have uh, five of them, uh, sorry, four of them focused on uh, human resource management, international marketing, marketing, corporate global accounting. And if you want to focus even more your career, we have a set of uh, seven MSCs that are even more focused to, to uh, certain areas of business. So you can see cybersecurity, project management, and the ones that are listed below. Uh, all these are taught face-to-face -face in different campus. Again, check with our colleagues which ones are offered in London, which ones are offered in Berlin, or other locations in the UK. But those five listed here at the right side, they are also on, uh, delivered online. So you can take them from uh, your current locations if you don't want to travel. Uh, as you can see, you can find the uh, generalist one, the strategy business management one, two of the specialist ones, global accounting and corporate financial management, and two of the very narrowly focused uh, MSTs, project management and cybersecurity and data governance. So that gives students a lot of choice, a lot of opportunities. And that's everything on my side. Uh, I'm happy to answer questions at the end. Yeah. You, uh... Indeed, indeed. Uh, thanks Dr. Andres for an excellent outline for the students who want to pursue business programs uh, and what a variety of courses in the contemporary areas are offered to these students. I must tell you this is something which is uh, Mind-boggling. You can see, uh, you know, cyber security and uh, so many areas which is uh, of contemporary relevance available to the students to pursue, and they are getting, in fact, uh, MSc along with that. So I believe it is uh, indeed uh, marvelous. Uh, Thank you. To proceed further, uh, we recently collaborated the University of Law UK. And Tatiana, can you explain uh, what are uh, the collaboration entails and what benefits opportunities it offers? Yes, uh, first of all, I would like to thank both Joe and Andres for their um, kind presentation of uh, both of our schools, law and business. Uh, I believe that we have managed to outline the benefits of uh, the University of Law, not only standing within the UK market, but also standing internationally, as we are very much moving forward as positioning ourselves as a leading university in an international arena of both law and business. Uh, doing though, we obviously have a, an overall international strategy within, we are looking very much favor in favor of partnering with reputable universities like uh, UPS. Uh, we have managed to do so over the last year and uh, Dr. Vijay, you were very much a key person in all the successful collaboration between our two institutions. So we are very proud today to present to you that we have managed to agree on a progression agreement. A progression agreement may seem like a very technical role within uh, the international partnerships um, framework, but what it really means is that uh, UPS graduates 
can progress automatically, subject to meeting the entry requirements of our courses, into any of our postgraduate courses, either in law or business, and they are provided with a discounted price of 50% on our tuition fees. That means that when you visit the site, of the University of Law, you can choose any of our courses at the postgraduate level, either face-to-face, -face, meaning that you would need to travel in one of our campuses and participate there in person, or as Andres mentioned, you can study uh, by staying in the location that you prefer, either because you work or because you prefer to stay uh, near your family and your home and also that would provide you with a 50% discount on any advertised price that you will see in our websites. We believe that this is an amazing opportunity for students uh, that they would wish to study with us in one of our postgraduate courses, but uh, we also offer this opportunity to the alumni of uh, UPS, uh, students that they have graduated from UPS and they are now working professionally, either in law or in business, or as engineers, or as medical professions, they also have the opportunity to join any of our postgraduate courses with 35% of discount on the advertised prices that you can see in our website. Uh, I'm very happy to answer any of the questions regarding the progression ar arrangement we have with the university, uh, with UBS. In case um, we want to move forward, it is not just us collaborating on uh, the recruitment, if you like, and the progression of the students in our campuses. Uh, we also offer international summer schools, study abroad programs, and uh, we have uh, shoot off with uh, Dr. Vijay a very successful international faculty exchange program, which means that uh, faculties on both sides can visit either the UK or we can visit India and exchange our expertise and experiences in a more international level, thinking that this would also benefit the students by a more intercultural approach in both law and business. So I think that is a, a very brief summary of uh, our works together, Dr. Vijay, over the last year. We are very proud of this collaboration. We are all very supportive of that. And we are very ready to welcome students in September, either in our online courses or in our face-to-face -face courses. We are equally proud of this particular partnership, Tatiana, and uh, thank you uh, for elaborating this particular uh, information, students. Uh, and I am uh, sure that uh, the students are going to take benefit of this uh, opportunity. And so well explained by Joanna and Dr. Andres in both the spheres of law and uh, business and cutting edge programs uh, obviously that uh, makes a lot of uh, sense in doing it if someone wants to pursue it from abroad Thank you. Uh, moving forward uh, there are information relating to scholarship accommodation estimating living costs and i believe this information is also available on your website yep. uh, and uh, there are a number of brochures in which this information is available the partner in this webinar can post the questions relating to any of these into the chat box. And uh, we have with us Miss Anna, who is going to, Anita, who is going to uh, reply to these particular questions. Uh, briefly, if you would uh, like to, uh, you know, tell something on this, uh, Tatya. Uh, uh, yes, briefly. thank you, Vijay. This is a summary of questions from prospect students that we have already received. So we thought it would be a good idea if we summarize everything and uh, we also place some information, particularly for the students in India. You can find this in the website that is put it on the right top corner of the presentation. But as you very rightly said, we are here to take any questions regarding in any of uh, the points of our presentation. I believe we have some Q&A questions already, so I will let you to guide us, Dr. Vijay, on that. Uh, great. So let us proceed with that particular uh, session and uh, let me now, uh, you know, go ahead with uh, taking uh, some questions and some aspects. So one of the greatest questions in the minds of aspirants, you know, who want to join, pursue their education abroad is what kind of a strength they should have in order to make a mark and get through a foreign degree. 
So, Joe, uh, if you would like to address on this particular point to the students, particularly if you focus on the law part of it, and I would similarly ask uh, Dr. Andrews to focus on the business part of it, because we have both kinds of students joining us in this webinar who are interested in business as well as law courses. I am interested in both law and management because that is what I had. So, <laughs> so over to you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, VJ. It's, it's a very good question, to be honest. I, th I think with law, people tend to get very um, absorbed by the knowledge elements. There's always a lot to learn, lots of different types of law. But I actually would say for anybody thinking about moving into or studying law is to have a genuine interest in the subject. It's not an easy subject. Um, some areas are quite challenging, uh, but I think as well as the knowledge, the other th area that people need to think about is their skills. If you're actually going to practice law, law at the end of the day, clients will come in to see you because they have got a particular issue they personally can't resolve. So so you need to have very good analysis and then they're paying you to problem solve for them. So what advice would you actually give them at the end of the day? So analysis and problem solving skills are really, really important. And then I would add to that um, to have good communication skills. And that's both written communication skills, but also just simply the ability to orally communicate with somebody. And so I think if any of you as part of whatever you know program you're actually studying on it currently you're showing your academic strength and actually studying on that program but do think about the skill side of it as well because you'll be learning an awful lot of what we call transferable skills that you can use in the law context which are very much valued by the firms they need people persons who can actually talk to other people it's really important yeah, that's uh, that's good. Uh, there, there's a question which I could uh, look into the Q and A session is relating to this online and offline, you know, sessions. And uh, okay. there's a question that whether uh, there can be a mix of this online and offline, or it is completely online and completely offline. I think what is the mechanism? Yeah, okay, so if you, just to clarify that really, if you come over to England to study, then it, our programs are primarily face to face program a tutor with you in a classroom but even then a lot of your prep preparatory work and all your so your consolidation work will be available to you online if on the other hand our programs are you choose to elect to do any of the online programs that either myself or Andres were talking about all your materials will be available to you online but what we will do through technology like this is actually support students learning so it may not be face to face in a classroom, but what it will be is, is through various, we, we have an online classroom as part of our virtual learning environment for students called Collaborate. Some universities are using Zoom, using the technology that we've actually got now, but we've got a dedicated um, online facility to do that, that allows us to have breakout rooms, put students in, you know, Andres was talking about groups of 20 to 30, the online classroom tool enables us to break students down to work on areas in small groups in exactly the same way as we would actually do yeah. in the classroom in face to face. So it, actually the COVID situation has enabled us to move on an awful lot with this, you know, and, and actually explore the technology much more. Uh, yes. But the, the, really, from our perspective, the tutor input, whether it's actually physically in a classroom or online, is very important it goes back to that point i was making earlier about supporting students through their study whether it's on a business or a law program that's great uh, thank you for that particular input and uh, i must this focus on uh, the project based uh, you know teaching is something which is a unique uh, point which i noticed because when i was in your campus in london I observed a couple of sessions, uh, this close group sessions with the students, and they were quite marvelous. You know, so much of time being given by the tutors to the students individually uh, on each of the problems and yeah. actually making them draft and analyze a real estate agreement. I was in a prob probably in a class of a real estate tutor, and it was quite a wonderful experience to yeah. observe it. And we had two tutors coming to our uh, university and deliver mm -hmm. one program on academic yes. and professional yeah. skills. And we observed it in our, in fact, our faculty observed it. And it was quite a learning experience for all of us. Uh, and I'm sure this is something which is quite unique to you law. Uh, so coming back to Dr. Andres, uh, 
the same question as to what should be the aspiration of the students and what should they look for to make a mark uh, when they are looking for doing you know programs from the uh, ULO business school uh, yes, thank you. I, I, I don't think I have a, di a different answer to uh, Joe <laughs> because I, I fully agree. I think that is a combination of uh, probably three things. One is the the knowledge. Definitely, they need they need to study hard. They they, they need to uh, acquire that those uh, techniques that we need to uh, deliver for for them. Uh, there's a decision whether or not you want to be a generalist or specialist. That's an important decision you need to make, and uh, that links also with uh, what the Joe mentioned before about the the preferences, the 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 the, the kind of person you are. There's some introspection that you need to do before you join because you need to self as a generalist or specialist and that's something you need to do previously so don't don't get it wrong because you will <laughs> choose the wrong path uh, second is the skills definitely uh, uh, there are many skills that we try to, to develop in our programs uh, for business one is as i said critical decision making so uh, critical thinking development uh, we, we don't want uh, people just to learn things from the book uh, we want them to apply to business situations but also communication persuasion negotiation uh, presence uh, executive presence so all these things happen if you need to uh, raise your hand in a, in a class and uh, defend your positions your uh, opinions in front of others mm. of other peers so you're developing communication persuasion because you are trying to persuade them about the, what your ideas are right so all of them happen in our uh, methodology and there's a third and very important aspect which is uh, attitude um, students need to show open-minded uh, attitude uh, absorb uh, and uh, with a very open uh, mindset uh, all, all the all the knowledge and, and the skills that they, they need to develop from the beginning um, also the sense of self-improvement needs to be there I think that anyone that enters a postgrad program is showing that sense of self-improvement taking challenges and also the ability to work in multicultural environments all this is really a part of the attitude so to me it's like a triangle between knowledge skills and attitudes Great. So I think this particular triangle is a very important triangle and we all educators, when we are setting up the course curriculums and program outcomes, we are looking at this triangle that the yeah. student gets this. And I believe in an, at an abroad destination when someone travels from India to study, uh, these particularly these skill and attitude, uh, attributes uh, is a focus area in which people would like to work more. Uh, that, that is, that is uh, of focus area for everyone to in fact move abroad and do a study so it, it, taking taking it forward you know uh, dr andres uh, i was looking at uh, your brochure and in fact in your on your website because i am from the law background but still i was quite interested in the business school mm -hmm. and particularly after reading your profile you know so, such an excellent work you are doing in in terms of the strategic uh, partnership of the business schools I was just uh, trying to understand this uh, term that is a workshop model of teaching by commercially experienced tutors. So uh, I understand it from the perspective of law because I have seen it personally, but how does it happen in business? If you can mm -hmm. just briefly uh, give an uh, outline to our students. Yeah, no, thank you for asking because I think it's a very critical element of our teaching. Uh, normally, if you, if you want to dynamize and you want to make uh, to ask uh, difficult questions to to the students who are practical and uh, allows them to develop that uh, critical reasoning, uh, probably uh, the fact that you may have been in contact with the private uh, sector, that you have working companies, that you have had to focus and to confront situations like the ones that you are describing in the case of this, the business situation you, you are using as a basis for discussion. It really gives an edge, it gives, uh, makes a difference. So it's not just uh, reading a book uh, before the students did, so I know the knowledge and I can transfer it. That's not the idea. Uh, probably, I mean, students notice when they, they embark in a conversation and they try to discuss, let's say, the business model of, uh, I don't know, Apple or, 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 or Coca-Cola or, or, or I don't know, any, any Nike or any, 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 any brand. Um, uh, hello? <laughs> so the, definitely if, if, if the, this uh, case discussion is led by some 
somebody who has been uh, confronting these situations in any organization in the past or uh, or they are sometimes they are consultants they quite often they are consultants that they do consultancy for other companies so it, it gives a, it makes a difference really i mean students will notice that that's for sure so that's really the contribution that we expect from this kind of uh, lecture indeed that is a good input and uh, i believe that is how it should be for at least the business people uh, mm -hmm. i will come back to you dr andris there is one question which i wanted to ask you but uh, let me now uh, turn to joe and uh, uh, joe to uh, you i would like to ask uh, a specific question and this relates to your uh, national law fair you know and uh, uh, i had a chance to attend this uh, when i was there fortunately that that was happening and i just uh, looked at it and it was such a wonderful uh, you know uh, situation for the students wherein you know law firms are coming and uh, they are uh, you know having that particular opportunity if you would like to just briefly elaborate on that point because i understand many of our students are thinking about this employability aspect and the opportunities yeah. which they would get when they go there so would you like to give a brief overview of that yes of course no problem vj um Essentially, because of us within England and Wales as, as one of the largest providers of certainly postgraduate qualifications in law that enable students to go on and practice as solicitors and barristers. Every year we hold what we call a national law fair. It rotates, but uh, being in London and, and in the north um, at every two years. But essentially, um, all the major firms both in the city in London but also regionally are invited to actually come along and they have sat those law that law fair and it enables students to actually go along and introduce themselves to start to do some networking informally with those firms and, and actually to understand their areas of practice. I think one of the things I would actually say about all law firms, and I'm sure Andres would say this with business as well, um, the law firms are very keen to recruit the best. It's, you know, and they regard it as huge competition to recruit the best students. So they're very very keen to uh, attend the law fairs and in a sense sell themselves as employers to students and obviously students get you know a great advantage from that as, as I say as an opportunity to go around and also to get a little bit of a feel for the type of work that those firms do you can obviously do a lot of research beforehand online and we'd always advise students to do that don't walk up cold and say what does your you know what does your firm do go up with an informed question you know I understand you focus in energy law can I just have been studying this at how get that dialogue going and then what a lot of um, employers will do from those types of events is, is give students updates on whether there are placement opportunities available and they often do placements I mean the firms vary but sometimes they do them at Christmas do them at Easter and do them in the summer or certainly two out of those three so it's an opportunity then for a student to apply to one of those and actually to put as part of that application you know I've been studying I came you know I'm met x y and z in that firm because Equally, from a student point of view, it also enables you to make the decision that's really not the area or the type of practice I would want to go into. And that's an equally important decision because one of the things I'm sure Andres would say this about law and business, there's a phenomenal amount of opportunity out there. Right. So you do need to do your research and, and, and focus on an area you think you would actually be interested in. Sometimes you'll try it and you'll decide you're not interested in it. There's no harm in that at all. It's all good experience. And it enables you to go on again and say, you know, I'm interested in this because. Indeed, it is uh, such a wonderful because I thought that there is some festival going on. And uh, when I went there, you know, there were so many firms and this. so it was quite an interesting, uh, yes. you know, opportunity for the students. Thank you for elaborating that, Joe. And uh, thanks a lot for that information. Uh, Dr. Andres, uh, there was a question by one of the students who was asking about where the MBA because see in India, there is a fascination that with MBA and uh, we find at your business school you are terming it MSc. So if you could just briefly tell about this, uh, that uh, there is no distinction between this. Essentially, we are talking about the business uh, law post-graduation degree. 
Yes, uh, I mean, uh, both programs, uh, they are master's programs and they are level seven, what we call level seven. So it's essentially the same level of uh, academically talking, let's say. Um, the MBA is a slightly more uh, senior program, uh, focused on uh, executives uh, who have a leadership position at the moment, or they are aiming to have a leadership position uh, very shortly. So uh, probably uh, the MSc, uh, in, in terms of the time when the students would uh, be taking the, 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 the programs. Probably the MSC constitute an uh, earlier stage and then hopefully they can progress to, to, to MBA normally. Uh, you know that MBA normally requires a slightly more senior, senior uh, program. But as I said, all of them are master's degree. Uh, um, all of them are equivalent in terms of uh, the level of the modules. And uh, yes, they, they, they can be That's uh, considered. And in fact, part. in fact, in the times of COVID, I believe MSc makes more sense. Uh, you know, because uh, that is uh, that is something which uh, relates, and uh, and it is very very important that uh, knowledge is required. I have not gone into the curriculum of uh, the uh, you know courses, but must be very very rich, as is the tradition of you law. Uh, so before I proceed uh, to the panelists, you know that will be the last question to you people would be your uh, you know last advice for the uh, students but before i turn to joe and andres i have a question to tatiana and uh, this particular question is uh, relates to your uh, nature of your work that is international partnerships and uh, you have opened up uh, you know uh, places at number of places now i can see hong kong and uh, other places so has it happened with you that you have found a, law, a ULAW alumni meeting you and uh, telling you uh, that yes, uh, yeah, I have did, uh, did uh, because I recollect when you came to India, uh, th there were a couple of ULAW alumni who met you and said that yes, we did uh, law from ULAW. So if you could like to share briefly about this experience for the participants, you know, uh, I know it is not core content which we are discussing, but I thought that uh, that would be, uh, you know, intriguing for our participants who are joining us. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, yes, so you're right. Uh, nice extent to not only the UK. Uh, we are fortunate enough that half of uh, the UK Parliament have some way graduated from the University of Law, either from a postgraduate qualification or undergraduate courses. Uh, including the mayor of London. So obviously we are very proud of uh, our national uh, UK alumni database. But uh, again, what, what really makes us very proud is when, as you mentioned, travel abroad and we find uh, most of our alumni having very senior uh, positions. Um, that is obviously very helpful for us to, uh, if you like, investigate the opportunities we have on the ground. So, for example, in Hong Kong, uh, the president of the Law Society in Hong Kong is our alumni. And as you mentioned, in India, we, through the international conference that we co-organize with UPA, we met a number of very senior uh, law and business graduates of the University of Law that um, they are now operating from and working from India. The same goes for a number of other places, Uzbekistan, Mexico, Spain, uh, which really encourages us of working more and more internationally, but also shows the quality and the rich heritage of the University of Law and the opportunities that can provide to their students and graduates. So. We try to keep uh, a huge, this huge network quite well connected. We also deliver a number of events. So whenever we're visiting uh, different countries, for example, we visited Sri Lanka just before the pandemic with our vice chancellor. We had the opportunity to organize an alumni event on the ground. So our alumni not only met with each other, but obviously were informed of our works and our programs in study. They were all very interested, although they were senior professionals to follow one of our academic masters. And um, this is why we believe so much that opportunities like the ones we have with yourselves would provide uh, your students the 
uh, ration that they will require either in business or in law, it is a huge opportunity to have the, uh, a discounted price of 50% in, in current times, I think, for everybody uh, and be able to pursue um, international qualification to the standards that this is provided by the University of Law. Uh, it certainly make a difference in your career and it certainly make a difference in your mindset. Uh, moving on internationally and acquiring this experience. Uh, as we mentioned, this is now offered both face-to-face uh, -face and uh, picking up from what uh, Joe has already stated and Andres, because of the pandemic, we, we, we are very strong in online uh, delivery of our courses. Uh, this is very much based in personalized learning. We try to simulate the face-to-face -face environment as close as possible. We, we genuinely believe that students do not lack of any element of the quality of our teaching or of the overall experience that they would get in case they choose to participate in any of our courses online. Plus, they are much more flexible and they are much more financially sustainable for a number of cases of professionals that they still work within the ladder of their professional career. Uh, I, I have seen the queue and a number of questions on the online uh, provision. Uh, we are all happy to answer any of those, either in writing or verbally right now, uh, Dr. Vijay, if time permits. Uh, Dr. Vijay, I think yeah, you're I mute. Take, I would take the, uh, you know, last inputs from uh, Joe and Dr. Andrews, and then I will hand it over to Anita. Anita can uh, take those particular. So to go ahead with uh, the my last, uh, you know, I would re request uh, Joanna and Dr. Andrews to provide your uh, advice or what I should say. In India, we say blessings always, you know, so teachers and elders always give blessings to uh, the students. So your last piece of advice for the students who are uh, looking forward to you know, do their degrees abroad, uh, what would be your suggestion? Uh, starting with Joe. Uh, thanks Vijay. I mean, I, I think seriously, do your research, do your homework. You can do an awful lot of research now online. Um, have a think about, certainly from a law perspective, and I, I've sort of kept just a, a sort of quick eye on the chat box as it's gone through. Um, you know, some people are thinking about, do I want to do an academic master's in law or do I go down the route of, of vocational training? Um, it, there's fantastic opportunities there for you to do either. So I would have a look and have a think about what you want to do. If you're not sure about the vocational route, if you can get any work experience, even if it's for a very short period of time, literally a week in a legal practice, it'll give you that sense of feeling of, yes, this is something I'd like to do. Perhaps it isn't. But what I'd make the, the point is a very general point in that training in law, I think Tatiana's just really shown this really well, actually. A training in law does give you a very sound educational training and qualification that you can go on and do so many different things both law and business in fact are very well respected subjects and so don't be frightened of having a go and don't you know be worried that you've perhaps made a wrong decision at some point if you don't try don't get anywhere do you in life so you know i would certainly do your research have a think about where you think you want to be. And when it comes to providers, at the end of the day, go for the quality. You know, we've, we've mentioned to you the number of alumni that we've got. They're in significant areas, both in law and business and practice. And, you know, it's a good network to have when you actually get out there in, that, in the workplace to have that alumni connection across the piece. And that goes to the quality of the programmes, but also look at the student support. Don't go somewhere that just leaves you to it and gives you a load of books and says off you go. You know, law is a challenging discipline. Make sure you go somewhere that gives you the appropriate student support to, su to succeed. That's great. That is a good piece of advice. Dr. Uh, Andres, over to you. 
thank you. Uh, again, I, I don't think I can say anything much different to that uh, because I, I agree this uh, first exercise of uh, introspection, uh, students need to understand what kind of uh, professionals they want to be and uh, act consequently. After that, there's definitely some research that needs to be done. Uh, so, and to, to, to my advice would be, apart from the one that uh, Joe uh, already gave, is uh, particularly for business, try to find the providers that uh, are King on the delegation instead of just uh, lecturing because it's, it's essential. I mean, people uh, think and probably they think rightly that uh, an award open doors to opportunities and that, that's that's right. But they just open the door. Uh, what happens inside the place? Uh, it depends on the kind of education that you have received and having developed skills uh, that have to do with communication, discussion, critical thinking, uh, how to apply concepts to a business situation. That's the kind of thing that when you're sitting in the in the in the board in the table with other colleagues with other professionals uh, and you start a discussion will stand out because you don't just have the knowledge you have been discussing yeah. all these things for one whole year so that it will make a difference that's why practical education in business in particular is essential yeah, that's, good that's great uh, thank you dr andres uh, for that particular uh, input for the students uh, and Tatiana, uh, I have uh, had a look at this particular chat box and uh, many of the questions we have already addressed and Anita was actually right. responding them at the background. So in fact, that has been taken care of. Anyways, we are available here. This is what is the beauty of the partnership to all the participants who have their questions. You have the number of the international team and we have your emails. So probably the team will be reaching out to you uh, with uh, your further uh, answers if we because this will be scanned further and any inputs which uh, has to be given has to uh, will be provided to you all and uh, at this uh, moment i would like to thank our panelists uh, ms joanna pro vice chancellor uh, you law thank you for joining us uh, jo, jo. Uh, dr andres uh, thanks a lot i heard you for the first time in this particular interaction and uh, it's wonderful we need to catch up more uh, Tatiana sure. has been, I have been interacting often and uh, she's such an excellent person uh, and a lot of information she carries with her. This is what uh, I would say. Uh, and thank you, Anita, for joining and Dr. Sheetal for organizing this particular event for all our students. I'm sure everybody got benefited from this interaction. I must say I got benefited out of it a lot. Learned a new aspect and dimension, particularly from U Law School of Business. And uh, thanking you all, uh, I close this particular session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Joanna. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Bye. Thanks very much. Thanks, Darth. Thanks, Joanna. Thank you. Thank you.